Abby, what do you do on the ISS? Over. All right. Hey, Abby, it's great to talk to the Grizzlies. I'm glad to hear people coming across on the radio. I would say on the ISS, uh, I'm a Bart Nathan fan. Uh, I'm an athlete, and I'm also a scientist. So any good day, I want to in all sorts of different uh, activities. Over. Can you see other planets from the space station? Over. Yes, I can see other planets with the space station, but they look almost like they do to you on Earth. So I can see Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and Venus. Uh, very similar to what you see up at night. Over. What does space look like? Over. Uh, space. If it's the daytime, space is just total blackness, complete and utter blackness. If it's nighttime and I turn off all the lights inside, then I see thousands and thousands and thousands of stars, way more than I see when I'm on Earth, and they don't twinkle at all. We don't have an atmosphere that we look through, so it's really beautiful. Over. What do you eat? Over. Well, we have uh, the, what we call shelf-stabilized food and hydrated food that we add water to. And overall, it's a lot like what you eat on the ground. It's just uh, been really well preserved. So I'm looking forward to having a pizza when I get home. Over. Is it fun being in space? Over. It's like being at the best playground because I have no, uh, no gravity really uh, acting on me as I feel it. So I can do flips and summer thoughts all through the space station, and then I get to look out the window at Earth. So, yeah, this is the, this is the coolest place I've ever been. Over. What does Earth look like from space over? Earth is amazing for space. It's way different than I expected. It's really dynamic. It's always changing, and it's almost entirely smooth. Uh, Africa and, and Australia are really red. And the United States starts red on the West Coast, and then by the time you get to the East Coast, it's completely green. Over. How long does it take you to go around the Earth? Over. Well, we're going really fast. We're doing 18,000 miles per hour, so it only takes us 90 minutes, so an hour and a half to go all the way around the Earth. Over. What kind of sports can you play in space? Over. Well, we can play anything we want. We've tried soccer, we've tried uh, baseball, but without gravity, it's, we have to invent a new sport, I think, and we haven't done it yet. Over. I get him to spacewalk, and how is it like? Over. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I have not yet done a spacewalk. I hope to do one. So, uh, we'll see, and I think it will be a little bit scary, but really cool. Over. Hi, Reed. This is Abby again. What made you want to become an astronaut? Over. Hey, Abby. Uh, I, I really love flying. And when I was a kid, I loved watching airplanes fly. And my parents took me to see a space shuttle launch. And I watched a few more as I grew up. And just watching those machines launch into space, uh, I was addicted and I wanted to do it. And I got lucky enough to do it. And here I am talking to Abby. And it's a really cool day for me. Over. Hi, Reed. This is Kaylee. How does it feel to be in a place with no gravity? Over. Well, at first, Kaylee, it's really confusing because your whole life you've had gravity, and now I don't have it. But now that I've been up here for a little over days, it's just wonderful. I really love it, and you would too. Over. What is the best part about being in space? Over. Yeah, you know, there's so much great about being up here, but I'd say the best part is looking at our surface. It's so... Incredibly beautiful when you get to look out at it and see the horizon up against the black of the space. It's just really special. Over. What have you learned in space that could help us here on Earth? Over. Autumn, that's, uh, that's the question that we're always trying to answer at NASA and how we make life better through ISS research. And really, so far, uh, we're doing a lot on the human body. And our bones decay up here, our eyesight changes, our heart changes. Our skin changes, so we're looking at all that to try to understand why all this stuff happens. And if we can figure it out, and maybe we can apply some of that knowledge to uh, on Earth and help them, uh, especially people who are sick. Over. How do you get oxygen in space? Over. That's a great question. Uh, sometimes we fly it up in tanks and then we pump it into our atmosphere, but we also have a really cool machine on board called the oxygen generator, and it actually takes water breaks off the hydrogen, and you're left over with oxygen, and then that oxygen gets pumped into the uh, atmosphere on the space station. So it's a really neat machine, and uh, it's good that we have it here. 
Over. How hot or cold can it get in space? Over. I think you look, look it up and ask your teacher so that you get an exact number, but I think it's about plus and minus 300 degrees centigrade. So it's, in the sun, it's unbelievably hot, and in the cold, it's incredibly cold. But in the space station, it's always about 72 degrees, so much nicer than in Arizona. Over. Do you like your job? Over. Hey, Maddie, I got the best job in the world. Over. Is it hard to eat or breathe in space? Over. Well, Tommy, it's, it is not hard, but your body has to learn. So the first two weeks that I was up here, it was hard to eat because there's no gravity to pull all that food down into your stomach. But once your body starts to learn how to do it, it's really easy to eat. And uh, breathing is no different at all. Over. How do you return to Earth? Over. Uh, about 200 feet from where, from where I'm floating right now, I have a little spacecraft. It's really tiny, and only three people can fit inside. It's called a Soyuz. So we will get inside that spacecraft. I'm not going to the space station on November 10th, and, uh, which is one day before my birthday, so that's really cool. And we will return to Earth in that little tiny capsule uh, through our atmosphere, and then a parachute will come down, come out, and we will float out to Earth. Over. Hi, Ray. This is Jennifer. I would like to know, what message do you have to share with our students today on Earth while you're in space? Uh, what message? Like, uh, explain that a little better for me, Jennifer. What is the one thing you're looking forward to the most when you return to Earth in 80 days? Over. Uh, I got two little girls. One's six years old and one is eight years old. I cannot wait. What is the one thing that you miss the most while you're in space? Over. Uh, I missed the second half of that uh, statement. I missed the first half. Try to get over. And finally, our question comes from Camilla, who you know your feathered friend is here, and she would like to know what it's like to use the space potty. Oh, that's a great question. Well, you can tell Camilla that I have not gotten stuck in it, like she did when she was with uh, astronaut Clay Anderson. Uh, at first, it's pretty difficult. And then as you get used to it, it's actually not that bad. But without gravity, it's just really hard to go to the bathroom. Over. And is there anything else that you would like to tell us about yourself, Reed? What, what current experiments are you working on right now? Over. Well, sure. Right now, uh, to say thank you for your time today and we know it's valuable and we definitely look forward to seeing you return safe and sound in just a couple of months. Over. Hey, thanks a lot, Jennifer, and all the crew. Please, it's fantastic to talk to you all today and uh, I wish you a great weekend. Take care. Over. Thank you so much, Reed. Have a great day. Thank you. Uh, anyone at this? Thank you. Last summer, um, in the summer of 2013, I was one of the teachers who flew through the Teacher from Space program in Microgravity University, and that was through the NASA Teaching from Space. As an outreach program, they offered an incentive to all the teachers, there was 35 of us, to some proposals to talk to an astronaut in space this coming school year. So the proposal went out to NASA last September. We found out in December that we were one of the schools selected for this next round of schools to be um, working with. And so we've actually been working on this for close to a year from start to finish. I have some fantastic administrators in Peoria who believed in me in the past, who's given me the leadership skills and who continue to help me to grow as a teacher both personally and professionally. And I was really excited when I got the offer because that's a once-in-a-lifetime um, once 
thing that you can do and it doesn't come around often that you get to talk to an astronaut in space. So it was really exciting when I heard about it. When I was little, they used to ask us what we wanted to be when we grew up and astronaut always made me, you know, go, oh my gosh, that'd be so cool. But I, I'm just kind of scared of the whole factor of being away from people that I care about. And the one thing I'd like to be when I grow up is I want to be a pediatrician or a PA because I love little kids. So I want to be in the medical field and I just hope one of my friends becomes an astronaut because that'd be really cool. Somewhere in the future I'll definitely be looking up at the ISS and smiling this great big smile and just saying that we did it and we got to talk to an astronaut on board.